students in the last class we discussed the introductory part of endocrine system in this class we have to discuss the endocrinal glands remaining part and disorders and next we have to discuss regarding the genetics the blood groups up to sex determination and we already discussed regarding the genetics in the MZ examination from the genetics we are getting 3 marks from the endocrinal disorders we are getting 1 bit now as we observe the endocrinal disorders as well as the remaining endocrinal glands in the endocrinal glands one we call it as pituitary gland that we call it as the master gland of endocrine orchestra because it controls all other endocrine glands the second one we call it as thyroid gland and the next one is parathyroid gland adrenal gland pancreas parts of elementary canal gonads all these are considered as the endocrine glands among them one exception is the pancreas it is the second largest digestive gland in the pancreas both exocrine endocrine parts are present the exocrine part having ducts endocrine part has no ducts due to the presence of both exocrine endocrine parts the pancreas is called heterocrine gland or the mixed gland now we have to discuss each and every question regarding the question we have to discuss the surrounding bits now you have to observe the first question what is the characteristic moon phase buffalo hump are caused due to now as we observe the adrenal gland in the adrenal gland one part is cortex and the second part we call it as medulla and these parts are derived from one is derived from ectoderm and one is derived from mesoderm now here again you have to observe the question one is moon phase as we observe the phase of the patient who has been suffering from this symptom in the face area the tissue fluid is accumulated so the face enlarges that we call it as the moon face and the second one is buffalo hump as we observe the domesticated animals on the back side of domesticated animals the enlarged part we call it as hump like that of domesticated animals the one who has been suffering from this disease on the back side of the body the back portion enlarges in the form of hump now here the moon phase that means in the face area the tissue fluid is accumulated so the face is enlarged is called the moon phase followed by enlargement of hump that means the back part is enlarges what is the reason one option is hyper secretion of cortisol the second one is hypo secretion of cortisol third one is hyper secretion of insulin and the fourth one we call it as hypo secretion of insulin now as we observe the cortex in the adrenal gland one part we call it as cortex the cortex secretes mineralocorticoids glucocorticoids and sex corticoids we know very well what is the example for the mineralocorticoids that is aldosterone now it is eliminated the second one we call it as glucocorticoids what are the examples for the glucocorticoids cortisol cortisone corticosterol generally if we are suffering from skin diseases whenever we are suffering from the skin diseases we are getting itching irritation and inflammation 
to get to relief from the skin diseases we are going to approach a dermatologist the dermatologist has to give the medicines the medicines suggested by dermatologist generally consisting the cortisol or cortisone or corticosterol these are nothing but the steroids once we are taking the steroids we are getting euphoria what is meant by euphoria that means we are getting the reliefness from the skin allergies now you have to observe characteristic moon phase buffalo hump are caused due to the less secretion of what type of steroid cortisol hyposecretion of cortisol so the answer is the second one now we go for the next question in the largest endocrine gland the follicles contain now as we observe the endocrine glands the largest endocrine gland we call it as the thyroid now as we observe the thyroid gland the location of thyroid gland is in the neck region as we observe the thyroid gland in the thyroid gland two lobes are present these are called the two lobes the two lobes are connected by a connecting link that we call it as the asthmus asthmus is the connecting link between the two lobes of thyroid gland now in the thyroid gland so many follicles are present these follicles are lined inside by simple cuboidal epithelial cells now you again observe the question what is the largest endocrine gland that is the thyroid gland the thyroid gland has two lobes the two lobes are connected by asthmus it is a connecting link now as we observe the tinea solium life history in the tinea solium life history the ovary has two lobes the two lobes are connected by asthmus so in the life history of tinea solium we observe the presence of asthmus here also the two lobes are connected by asthmus each lobe is made by follicles in each follicle what type of epithelial cells are present the simple cuboidal epithelial cells now here what is the answer cuboidal cells that means simple cuboidal cells now the next question the endocrine gland of vertebrates probably homologous to endostyle of protocardates again you have to observe the question the endocrine gland of vertebrates what are the vertebrates we know very well the fishes amphibians reptiles apes mammals including the man all these are the vertebrates in the vertebrates body what is present the thyroid gland is present now as we observe the thyroid gland it is the modified endostyle now as we observe the endostyle the endostyle is present in the protocardates we know very well what are the protocardates urocardiata and cephalocardiata in all protocardates what is present endostyle is present now this is the structure of endostyle as we observe the endostyle the endostyle is lined by endodermal cells you have to observe the diagram this is endostyle the endostyle is lined by the endodermal ciliated cells endodermal ciliated cells now these are the cilia in case of protocardates what is the function of endostyle we learned very well in case of protocardates the endostyle helps in ciliary mode of feeding or filter feeding 
this endostyle is modified into thyroid gland in the vertebrates so that the structure of thyroid gland and endostyle is one and the same so structurally similar called homologous the thyroid gland also derived from endoderm the endostyle also derived from endoderm now based on this information you have to observe the endocrine gland of vertebrates probably homologous to endostyle of protocardates is no doubt the thyroid gland is the largest how many lobes are present two lobes the two lobes are connected by isthmus it is derived from the endostyle the endostyle is derived from endoderm so that the thyroid gland is also derived from endoderm so the fourth answer is correct now we go for the next question hormone that helps in maintaining body temperature as we observe the thyroid gland the thyroid gland secretes thyroxine hormone the thyroxine hormone is responsible for the general growth of the body now here the students are doing a small mistake what is the hormone responsible for the growth of the body no doubt the growth hormone in order to get the moderate growth the growth hormone is responsible in the body if growth hormone is not present generally the persons become the short we have to use a small silly word that we call it as bjp that means bhumiki janadu padavu it means the person is very very short the one in his body the growth hormone is very very less the person becomes short here as we observe the thyroid gland it secretes thyroxine hormone it is responsible for the general body growth but not moderate growth and it is responsible for the general metabolism and it is responsible for to maintain the basal metabolic rate and it is responsible to maintain the body temperature constantly so hormone that helps to maintain the body temperature calcitonin vasopressin thyroxine parathormone here the answer is the thyroxine now we go for the next question assertion insulin promotes the growth now as we observe the insulin hormone in our body as we observe the endocrine gland that we call it as the pancreas no doubt the pancreas is called the mixed endocrine gland or it is called the heterocrine gland in the pancreas as we observe the endocrine part of pancreas alpha cells and beta cells are present now the beta cells secrete the insulin hormone what is the function of insulin hormone the insulin converts the glucose into the glycogen the one who has been suffering from the diabetes the one who has been suffering from the diabetes in their body the beta cells are not working properly so the beta cells do not secrete insulin whenever insulin absent in their body the glucose is not converted into the glycogen so in their body in the blood the glucose level increases if the glucose level increases abnormally the glucose will come out along with the urine so every day the diabetic patients monitoring the glucose levels in the blood as well as in the urine here as we observe the other functions of the insulin the insulin is responsible for the growth of the body how far it is responsible for the growth for the growth of the body what are required the proteins the proteins are made by amino acids because of the presence of insulin in our body each cell absorbs amino acid amino acids are nothing but the blocks of proteins 
the proteins are made by amino acids as long as the proteins are present our body exhibit the growth so the insulin responsible to absorb the amino acids automatically the body exhibit the growth and it is responsible for the protein synthesis as we observe the proteins they are made by amino acids the proteins are responsible for the growth of the body the proteins are called the building block materials so that as we observe the young ones generally for the young ones every day we have to give the proteinaceous food material as long as the young ones are going to take the proteinaceous food material they have to exhibit a proper growth because the proteins are nothing but the body building materials now you have to observe insulin promotes the growth because it increases uptake of amino acids by the cells and protein synthesis proteins are nothing but made by amino acids proteins are building block materials so that automatically the body exhibit the growth indirectly the insulin responsible for the growth so both are correct or explain ca next question part 1 puffiness of skin second thick and dry skin third swelling in the neck and the fourth one we call it as protruded eyeballs again you have to observe in the list one puffiness of skin as we observe the skin this part is the outer part of the skin below skin what is present the subcutaneous tissue in the subcutaneous tissue the tissue fluid is accumulated so in our body the skin exhibits the swelling that we call it as the puffiness of skin this is one symptom associated with myxodema now as we observe the thyroid gland it secretes thyroxin hormone if thyroxin hormone level increases it is called hypersecretion if thyroxin hormone level decreases it is called hyposecretion both are problems if more thyroxin present we are getting some diseases if the thyroxin hormone is very very less we are also getting the diseases so always in our body the hormones are at balanced state now here puffiness of skin because of the accumulation of the tissue fluid in the subcutaneous tissue in our body the entire skin exhibit the swelling that we call it as the puffiness associated with one symptoms of the disease called the myxodema and the second one we call it as thick and dry skin now as we observe the skin always our skin is kept soft and the hairs are also kept soft due to the presence of the sebum the sebaceous glands secrete the sebum the one who has been suffering from the cretinism whenever the thyroxin hormone is very very less the person suffers from the cretinism the one who has been suffering from the cretinism the patient is very very short he has been suffering from the dwarfness and the abdomen enlarges belly like abdomen and the tongue enlarges like that of a dog and the one who has been suffering from the cretinism in his body the skin is dry so the thick and dry skin associated with cretinism swelling in the neck now in the neck region the thyroid gland is present in our dietary every day along with the food materials we are taking the salt in the salt what is present iodine is present in the dietary if iodine is absent the thyroid gland enlarges in its size that we call it as the simple goiter now here swelling in the neck that we call it as the simple goiter now protruded eyeballs now as we observe the protruded eyeballs now this one we call it as orbit in the orbit what is present the eyeball is present the one who has been suffering from the from the exophthalmic goiter or graves disease what is going to happen between orbit and eyeball 
the tissue fluid accumulates. If more and more tissue fluid accumulates between eyeball and orbit, what is going to happen? The eyeball comes out. That we call it as protruded eyeballs. Generally, the one who has been suffering from the thyroid deficiency, if we approach the doctor, the doctor suggests ultroxin tablets. Every day three times if we are going to take ultroxin tablets, the disease is slowly going to control. Now here, the protruded eyeballs associated with Graves disease or exophthalmic goiter, swelling in the neck, simple goiter, thick and dry skin that is cretinism, puffiness of skin that is myxodema. Now the next question is, assertion, body becomes heavy in the myxodema condition. The one who has been suffering from the myxodema in his body below the skin subcutaneous tissue is present. In the subcutaneous tissue more and more and more tissue fluid is accumulated. So, as we observe the body of myxodema patient, the skin exhibit the swelling. How it exhibit the swelling? Because of the accumulation of tissue fluid in the subcutaneous tissue. So, the person suffers from the heavy weight of the body. So, assertion, body becomes heavy in the myxodema condition because the mucus and tissue fluid accumulates in the subcutaneous tissue of the skin. So, both are correct or he explains here. The next question. Assertion. Parathormone helps in the homeostasis. Now, as we observe the neck region, here thyroid gland is present. How many thyroid glands are present? Only one. Around thyroid gland, the parathyroid glands are present. Number of parathyroid glands, two pairs, that means four. Now, the parathyroid glands secrete a hormone called parathormone. The parathormone maintains the calcium and phosphorus levels of the blood plasma. Here, we are asking, what is the assertion? Parathormone helps in the homeostasis. What is meant by homeostasis? to maintain water balance, to maintain salt balance, to maintain the solute balance, whatever it may be, it is correct. Now, what is the reason? It regulates the amounts or levels of calcium and phosphorus in the ECF. What is meant by ECF? Extracellular fluid. Now, this is one cell, this is another cell. Between the cells, the fluid is present. Again, it is one cell, it is another cell. Now, in our body, between the cells, the fluid is present that we call it as extracellular fluid. In the extracellular fluid, the calcium and phosphorus levels are maintained by what type of hormone that is called parathormone, secreted by parathyroid glands. Number of parathyroid glands, four or two pairs where they are present in the neck region around the thyroid gland. So, that both are correct or he explains here. Next question. Hypoparathyroidism causes hypocalcemia. What is meant by hypoparathyroidism? Suppose the person suffering from thyroid deficiency. In his body, the thyroid gland is enlarged. Now, the patient approaches the doctor. The doctor goes for surgery. While doing surgery for the thyroid gland, the parathyroid glands may be damaged. Or by any means, if parathyroid glands are damaged, the parathyroid glands unable to release the parathormone. It means the parathormone level decreases. Now here, you have to observe the assertion. Hypo, what is the meaning of hypo? Less secretion. Here, what is less secreted? Parathormone. Now, hypoparathyroidism means less amount of parathormone 
causes hypocalcemia. What is meant by hypocalcemia? In the blood plasma, the calcium levels falls down. But in the last question, what we discussed? The parathormone maintains homeostasis. What is meant by homeostasis? In the ECF, the calcium and phosphorus levels are maintained by the parathormone. If parathormone is less secreted, that we call it as hypoparathyroidism. The one who has been suffering from the hypoparathyroidism in his body, in the blood plasma, the calcium levels decreases. That we call it as hypocalcemia. Now here, the reason is levels of calcium in the ECF comes down in the hypoparathyroidism. So, both are correct or he explains A. Next question. Adrenal cortex is considered as 4S gland. Now, adrenal gland is considered as the 4S gland. Now, as we observe the adrenal gland, in the adrenal gland, one part we call it as the cortex. Now, as we observe the cortex, the cortex secretes the mineralocorticoids and glucocorticoids and sex corticoids. Now, again repeating, one part of adrenal gland is called cortex. The cortex secretes mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and sex corticoids. Now, as we observe the hormones secreted by cortex of adrenal gland, they maintain the sugar levels, they maintain the salt levels and they maintain the sex hormones. Now, as we observe the assertion, adrenal cortex is considered as the 4S gland because its hormones regulate sugar levels, salt levels and also controls the stress and sexual development. Now, this one we call it as the stress or strain. Now, you have to observe. In the sugar, the first word is S. Salt, first word is S. Sex hormone, first word is S. Stress or strain, the first word is S. Now, it is called the 4S. Because the cortex secretes mineralocorticoids. What is the example for the mineralocorticoids? That is aldosterone. What are the examples for the glucocorticoids? Cortisol, cortisone, corticosterone and the sex corticoids. What are the sex hormones? One is estrogen and the second one we call it as testosterone. So, the hormones secreted by cortex maintain the sugar level, the salt level, the sex hormones level, the stress and strain levels. So, that automatically we call it as the adrenal cortex is considered as 4S. Again, you observe the assertion. Adrenal cortex is considered as 4S gland because its hormones regulate sugar levels, salt metabolism and also controls the stress and the sexual development. So, both are correct or he explains A. Next question. Assertion. 4S gland is a highly essential gland. Now, again, we have to observe the assertion. 4S gland. What is the 4S gland? That is called the cortex. The cortex secretes what type of hormones? Mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids and sex corticoids. Here, we are asking what is the assertion? 4S gland is highly essential gland. It means without cortical hormones, there is no life because the mineralocorticoids are very, very essential. The glucocorticoids are very, very essential. The mineralocorticoids maintain the salt balance. The glucocorticoids maintain the carbohydrate metabolism, protein metabolism, the fat metabolism and sex corticoids. What are the sex corticoids? That is the testosterone that is present in the male animals and estrogen it is present in the female animals 
without mineral corticoids, glucocorticoids and sex corticoids, there is no life. If life is present, there is no thrill in the life. If these hormones are totally absent. Now, 4 years gland is highly essential. Why? The reason is, its secretions help in the existence, proper development and welfare of the body. If these hormones are absent, we are unable to exist. There is no welfare, there is no growth for the human being body. So, both are correct or explains here. Next question. Assertion. Hormones of adrenal medulla. Now, we are discussing the adrenal medulla. Now, the adrenal gland. The second part of adrenal gland, we call it as the medulla. Now, the medulla secretes what type of hormones? One is adrenaline and the second one we call it as noradrenaline. The medulla secretes adrenaline and noradrenaline. It is also called epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now, here you observe the assertion. Hormones of adrenal medulla are called 3F. Why? Because these hormones are responsible for the fight. These hormones are responsible for the flight. And these hormones are responsible for the frightness. Suppose we are moving on the road and we are going to meet an accident. While we are going to meet an accident, we are getting the fear. That we call it as the frightness. Whenever we are getting the fear, we move from that area that we call it as the flight. Suppose anybody attacks us, we are moving or we are going to fight with that person, that we call it as the fight. So, the adrenaline and noradrenaline responsible for the fight, responsible for the flight, responsible for the fearness. So that in these three conditions, the first letter is F. So that these two hormones are called the three F. These hormones are secreted by medulla. Hence, the medulla is called the three F. Now, you observe the reason. They prepare the person either to fight or flight or fright in the emergency situations. So, both are correct or explains here. Next question. Neurohypophysis or pars nervosa does not secrete but just releases the hormones. Now, as we observe the endocrine glands, the master endocrine gland we call it as the pituitary gland. So, we are having an idea. So, P means pituitary gland. It is the master gland of endocrine orchestra. Now, as we observe the pituitary gland, one part we call it as adenohypophysis. Now, the second part we call it as the neurohypophysis. Now, as we observe the neurohypophysis, the neurohypophysis by itself does not secrete any hormone. It does not secrete any hormone. But the neurohypophysis releases the hormone. How it is possible? Now, as we observe the diencephalon, in the last class we learned diencephalon, that is one part of the forebrain. The ventral surface of diencephalon, that we call it as hypothalamus. Now, as we observe the hypothalamus, in the hypothalamus, neurosecretory cells are present. Now, the neurosecretory cells secrete oxytocin and ADH. What is the meaning of ADH? Antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin. Now, these two hormones secreted by 
neurosecretory cells of hypothalamus. Now, these two hormones stored in the neurohypophysis. Time to time, the neurohypophysis releases these hormones, but not the secrete. So, assertion, neurohypophysis, it is also called the pars nervosa, does not secrete, but just release the hormones. Reason, hormones released from the neurohypophysis are actually secreted by hypothalamic neurons or hypothalamic neurosecretory cells. So, both are correct or he explains here. Now, the next question. Assertion, vasopressin is also called antidiuretic hormone. Vasopressin is also called antidiuretic hormone. Now, as we observe the nephron, in the nephron, one part we call it as distal convoluted tubule. The extension of nephron, the extension of nephron, that we call it as the collecting duct. Collecting duct is not the part of nephron. In the distal convoluted tubule, what is present? The renal fluid. In the collecting duct also, the renal fluid present. The collecting duct is present in the medulla and the DCT present in the cortex. Now, in the distal convoluted tubule, from the renal fluid, 9% water is reabsorbed with the help of antidiuretic hormone. Now, again, in the collecting duct, from the renal fluid, 10% of water reabsorbed with the help of antidiuretic hormone. It means the antidiuretic hormone responsible for the reabsorption of water from the renal fluid. If not, you have to imagine what is going to happen. If there is no antidiuretic hormone, we have to pass hypotonic urine along with the urine we pass more and more amount of the water. Automatically, after some time, we have to get the dehydration and going to die. In order to avoid the water loss, the antidiuretic hormone plays an important role to reabsorb water at the time of excretion. It is also called vasopressin. Now, you observe, vasopressin is also called antidiuretic hormone. It reduces the water loss in the urine so that we have to pass hypertonic urine. Every day along with the urine we pass the water but that is not useful for our body. So, both are correct or he explains here. Next one. Immunity acquired by an individual during the lifetime. What is meant by immunity? Immunity means the resistance power. Whenever the antigen enters into the body, we are getting the immunity. That is the property of antigen. You have to observe the words. Whenever the antigen enters into the body, for example, a bacterium enters into the body, a virus enters into the body, a foreign particle enters into the body, what is the property of the antigen? Once the antigen enters into the body, it stimulates the immune system. That is the property of antigen. If any particle does not stimulate our immune system, that is not said to be antigen. Now, here we are asking, immunity acquired by an individual during the lifetime without contact with the antigen without contact with the antigen, we are getting the immunity. Such immunity we call it as innate immunity or it is a natural immunity or by birth every organism going to get immunity that we call it as innate immunity. Innate immunity present in all organisms and it is the same in all organisms. So, immunity acquired by an individual during the lifetime 
that we call it as innate. The next one is colostrum. What is meant by colostrum? Now, as we observe the mother after completing the gestation period, in case of female human being, in case of female human being, what is the gestation period? 9 months or 275 or 278 days. After completing the gestation period, the mother has to give birth to young one. And now, the mother gives milk to the young one. For how many days the mother generally gives milk to the young one? At least 6 months. Now, the young one gets milk from the mother body. In the initial days, the milk coming from the mother body is slightly yellow in color. That we call it as colostrum. In the colostrum, what are present? Antibodies are present. It means from the mother body, the antibodies are transferred to the baby. So that it is a must at least up to 6 months, the young one better to get the milk from the mother body. It means the young one gets immunity from the mother body that is also called the innate immunity. Here the colostrum contains antibodies. Now here antibodies are transferred from mother body to baby body. Now the answer is the fourth one. The next one is central or primary lymphoid organs in the birth body. Now as we observe the immunity or immunology. Now take for example the human being body. In our body, what is the primary lymphoid organ? That is bone marrow and the thymus. What is the secondary lymphoid organ? That is the spleen, lymph nodes and malt. Now as we observe the malt, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. Again repeating, in our body, what are the primary lymphoid organs? Bone marrow and thymus. And what are the secondary lymphoid organs? One is spleen, the lymph nodes and malt. Mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. But here we are asking the central or primary lymphoid organ that is present only in the birds that we call it as the bursa fabrici. From the bursa fabrici, the B lymphocytes first identified so that these lymphocytes got the name the B lymphocytes. Why these lymphocytes are called B lymphocytes? First time these lymphocytes identified in the bursa fabrici. The bursa fabrici is the primary lymphoid organ in the bird's body. So the answer is the third one. Now we go for the next question. Natural killer cells are included under. Now as we observe the immunity topic. In the immunity topic, the lymphoid cells. As we observe the lymphoid cells, their percentage is 99%. In the lymphoid cells, one type of cells is B cells. The second one is the T cells. And the third one we call it as NK cells. Now, what is the NK cell? Natural killer cells. These are nothing but the lymphoid cells. And these are the large in size. And these are nothing but the granulocytes. It means in their cytoplasm, the granules are present. Here, we are asking natural killer cells are included under what type of category? The lymphoid cells. What is the percentage of lymphoid cells? 99 percent. The first one is B cell. The second one is T cell. And the third one is NK cell. Among these, what is the largest? The NK cell. 
Now, the NK cell come under the lymphoid cells. The next one, most potent antigen presenting cells. Now, as antigen, the antigen may be a bacterium or virus or any foreign body. Now, the antigen enters into the body. This antigen is represented to phagocytes. The antigen enters into our body. The antigen represented to the phagocytes by what type of cells? APC. What is the meaning of APC? Antigen presenting cells. What are the examples for the antigen presenting cells? One is the B cell and the second one is activated macrophage and the third one is the dendritic cell. These three are an examples of APC. Out of these three highly potent APC, the dendritic cell, that means if any antigen enters into our body, no doubt that is captured by the dendritic cell. So, it is highly potent. So, here the most potent antigen presenting cell is the dendritic cell. Now, the next question. Interferons. Now, a virus a virus enters into our body. We know very well our body is made by cells. Now, this is one cell. Now, this is virus. The virus enters into the cell. Now, because of the influence of the virus, the cell, infected cell, secretes alpha, beta, gamma, interferons. IF means interferons. Now, these interferons enter into another cell. Now, these cell secretes antiviral proteins. Again repeating, one virus enters into our body. Now, the virus enters into one cell. Because of the influence of the virus, the cell releases either alpha or beta or gamma interferons. Now, the interferons enter into another cell. Now, because of the interferon, this cell secretes antiviral proteins. Now, these proteins provide protection to other cells. Now, here what is the question? Interferons are here. Interferons are the small antiviral glycoproteins. Now, again we are repeating the virus enters into our body, that means enters into one cell. Because of the virus, the cell releases alpha, beta, gamma interferons. Now, the interferons are small glycoproteins. The interferons enter into another cell. Now, the cell releases antiviral proteins. These proteins provide protection to other cells from the virus. Now, the next question is screening test and confirmatory test of HIV infection. Now, as we observe the HIV virus by some methods, generally the sexual intercourse, illegal sexual intercourses, the HIV virus enters into the body. That is one method. The second one is contaminated syringe and needles. The HIV virus enters into the body. 
the person has been suffering from the HIV virus and approaching the doctor. What type of screening test and what type of confirmatory tests are conducted? One is ELISA. Because of the ELISA test, that is the screening test. In the ELISA test, if the patient gets a positive report, positive report means in his body HIV virus is present, but it is not confirmed. The ELISA test, enzyme linked immunosorbent test, enzyme linked immunosorbent test, it is only screening test. In the screening test, the report got positive. That means in his body HIV virus present. Again, we go for the western blot test. In the western blot test also, if the patient gets a positive report, no doubt in his body HIV virus is present. Now here, screening test, confirmatory test of HIV infections are respectively ELISA and western blot test. 